Go ahead, start so again. So a, a lot of people think that, you know, peasant farmers or whatever, because they're all hill tribe people, think that they don't understand what the consequences of burning are. They don't understand that they have climate consequences. They don't understand that they have environmental consequences. They don't understand that this has health consequences and so on. And therefore you need to educate them, okay? So they are educated about all these bad consequences. And then all these really educated farmers go out and burn their fields anyway. And, and nobody puts it together that this is not an issue of knowledge. This is an issue of necessity. People do not burn their fields because it is discretionary. They burn their fields because they have no other choice. They cannot plant if their field is full of last year's waste and all of the weeds. It has to be clear, right? And there is no one there during the dry season to clear that field. The field is too steep to use a tractor and no one can afford a tractor. And furthermore, the people who are left behind when everyone goes south to find work are babies. Explain children, that bit again about the going south. Oh, we didn't what, have that. Happens during, what happens during the dry season in most places in the north is that all healthy adults leave when the harvest is finished and return only in maybe mid-May to prepare the fields right before the rainy season. So what this means is that during the dry season in the north, you have single households headed by a woman who's been left behind for this person um, who is responsible for babies, children, disabled, and the elderly. The idea is that the healthy adults who've gone south for work will remit money back, but there's almost no money remitted back, right? Because they have to pay for housing, they have to pay for food, they have to buy a beer, they have to buy a you know, pack of cigarettes or whatever. There's not much money to send back again. And so the real problem then becomes that everybody up in the north is malnourished. They're too weak, they're too old, they're too young they are not going to go out onto a field that is sloped at 45 degrees <laughs> and, and hack down that corn. It's just not going to happen. But if we can make biochar in those villages and we can pay five baht a kilo for biochar, where the farmer is only getting five baht a kilo for his corn, yeah, then double. that guy's not going to go south. Yeah. He's going to stick around and his wife is gonna stick around. So you're gonna have strong adults there who are going to go out and who are gonna cut down that corn stalk, who are gonna bring it down, turn it into biochar, sell it for five baht a kilo and double their income from that field. Yeah. So the, and, and at the same time, I mean, socially, you get none of the social dysfunction yeah. that happens from having fathers and mothers missing from families' lives, from children's yep. lives, six months of the year, right? Yep. The drug use, the alcohol use, the yep. domestic violence, all of the STDs, mm. all of those social dysfunctions stop when you stop shipping out yep. adults to the yep. South for six months of the year, right? So there's just a huge amount to be gained by keeping people yeah. in place and stopping the smoke, stopping the climate change gases, stopping the public health costs by just mm. making biochar locally. Is so that... now we have to find a market for biochar, which is why we're here today, yeah. by the way, talking to Jeff about the, uh, from the um, Pacific Basin Economic Council. That's right. We're going to try and get some big businesses from around the world to sponsor and support the biochar.